Well, welcome back, everyone. We are back again at part number two of Unstoppable Financial Prosperity. Praise God. And I'll give everybody just about one minute to just get back on again. But again, we've been talking about living in this un this prosperity lifestyle, no matter, you know, this last uh, few years, <laughs> man, COVID happened. A lot of people lost members. They lost they lost uh, businesses. Uh, they lost jobs and things like that. And people are trying to recover financially and things like that. And so, but you know, as you, as you see the as you read the Bible and you study the Word of God, you see that God's people, even in the midst of all the chaos that was going on, God always made a difference between His people and the world. Whether it was concerning the healing, the Bible said that there was not one feeble person among them. Whether it was concerning finance, the Bible said that they had silver and they had gold. In the midst of all the different things that was going through. And so God is wanting to bring his body. If God did that for his church, I mean, the, if God did that for the, the people in the old time, when they were called servants, they were just called servants. How much more will God do it for his children, who he calls his sons and his daughters? And so God wants to do it for his sons and daughters today. And, and you and I are those sons and daughters that God wants to do it through in Jesus' name. And so uh, he, he wants us to begin to believe him at that level. You know, that, that he says, if, if I did it for my son, my, my, my natural sons, you know, I, 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 or I did it for my servants, how much more am I willing to do it for my sons and daughters who've been bought by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ? And so I'll just wait one more minute for you to get on. And those areas, some of you that are getting on, I'll get to my other little uh, uh, phone here so I can be able to see some of you that as you're getting on there in Jesus' name. And so I believe that God has some, God has some great things in store today. Go, and we're going to get into this. And I just really want many of you just to, amen, come on and pra praise God. Pastor Reed, I see you already on. Glory to God. And uh, many more of you that are coming on, welcome, welcome, welcome back to uh, being back on again today in Jesus' name. So are you ready? Are you ready for part number two of this? We're talking about unstoppable prosperity. Unstoppable prosperity, praise God. And this is where, uh, no matter what you're going through, as I said, you, you know, uh, number one, you see in the Bible, I want the Word of God to be my example. And, and we look in the Word of God where no matter what happened to the, uh, in, in the area, even the Old Covenant, the people of God prospered in, during poverty times. During the, and everybody else is going through all kinds of things. God's people even prospered in Jesus' name. And so God is bringing His church now uh, to a, this revelation that, that no, matter what's going on, what's, no matter what's going on in the world right now, God says it's time for you and I to move into the realm where there is unstoppable financial prosperity. Now, like I said, some people say, you know what? I'm not into all that money. Let me tell you something, sense of God. You know, uh, uh, you know you're going to have to make sure you listen to CNN then <laughs> or NBC or, or Fox News because you're going to begin your news from them and, and they're talking bad news. You, the God's got some news now. New, fresh revelation. Uh, that he's bringing to the body of Christ now because he says, I want my people to, 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 to prosper during, the, during pre pressure times. I want them to succeed. So again, again, welcome back, everyone. Again, we're going to, in this second part, we're going to be talking about keys now to have an unstoppable financial prosperity, okay? Number one, this is important. We all know this scripture uh, uh, in, in that area. Seek how the kingdom functions and what makes it operate. You have to seek how the kingdom functions and what makes it operate. In other words, you and I are on a whole different system. The moment you get born again, you and I come under a whole different system. Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot enter or even see the kingdom of God. So when you get born again, <clears throat> you and I come under a whole nother system. So it's important for us to see and understand how this how this system called the kingdom of God operates, because that's what you want to operate in. And the thing is, a lot of the people in the world are operating under that old system. You follow me? And and, and and you know, trying to get all they can, can all they get? <laughs> you follow me? First, like I said tonight, many people will say, "Oh, Doctor Craig, two hours, two hours." But God put in my heart. Wait a minute, two hours. Most people right now, you know, I'm not putting this down at all. You know, on, on Sunday you watch two hours of football. On Monday night, you watch two hours of basketball and football. 
And then many of you, you know, uh, 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 watch a, a two-hour movie. I, I watch movies, nothing wrong with none of that. But how about two hours of the word? Amen. So we're going to change your life. So we got to begin to put a value on the word of God in those areas. Now, think about this. Uh, 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 Matthew, let's go to Matthew chapter number 6, verse 33. It said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness... And then all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, how the kingdom operates, how the kingdom functions. You got that? And then if you understand how the kingdom operates and how the kingdom functions, all things that you need that other people are seeking after, going after, trying to raise money for, having big sales, chicken, he said all those things that everybody else is seeking after will just be added to you. You ain't got to go after them. They're going to be added to you. Remember he said all these things the Gentiles seek, but when you understand the kingdom of it operates, it's going to be added to you. You got that? And then notice the book of St. Mark chapter number 4 verse 11. He said, and he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them secular people, it, uh, uh, that are without all these things done in prayer. In other words, when you, when you talk about how the kingdom operates, we talk about seed, time, and harvest. The, the world says that don't make no sense. Make no sense at all. But he says, to you it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, how it operates, what causes it to function. And if you seek first that kingdom, how it operates, how it functions, all those things everybody else is seeking after, working two jobs for, They'll just be added to you. Amen. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Head not the tail. Above not beneath. They'll be added to you in Jesus' name. So notice again, as Jesus describes also again in the book of Mark chapter number 4 verse 26. He says this. And he says, so is the kingdom of God. Ex explaining now. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And shall sleep night, sleep and rise night and day, and the seed shall spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. Verse 8, 28, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full ear in the corn. He's saying, you want to know how to get everything added to you? The thing that the Gentiles are seeking and going after? He said, you'll seek the kingdom, how it operates. It's a mystery to the world. It's also a mystery to carnal-minded Christians. He said, but for those that seek the kingdom, first, he said, all those things that the Gentiles are seeking, going after, will be added to you. You're going to be blessed in the city. You're going to be blessed in the field. You're going to be the head, not the tail. You're going to be not above, not beneath. You're going to be the lender, not the, the borrower. Blessing going to come on you and overtake you. But you got to first understand seeking the kingdom, how it operates, and what causes the function. It's a mystery to the world. He said, but the kingdom, he says, in verse 26, I'll go back there again. He said, the kingdom is as a man that casts seed into the ground. In other words, the kingdom operates on the principle of seed, mm, of seed. That when a man puts it in the ground, it comes up, he knows not how. It, it, it operates above the natural human understanding. It's, the seed operates on the principle that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him, God, in all your ways and him through the principle of the kingdom and how seed operates will direct your paths. But you're not going to know how it happens. You're going to operate the principle of the seed. You got that? So he so therefore, the kingdom of God, everything God does concerning the kingdom, he told Nicodemus about, it operates by the law of seed. So if you don't get a revelation of seed, you can be a good Christian Paying your tithes, <laughs> amen, and still be broke. 
that Job turkey. They all say broke is Job's turkey. I never know if Job had a broke, a broke turkey or not, but but you can, and that's why a lot of people are paying the tithes and, and, and still broke. They're, they're, they're faithful tithers. They're still broke because they don't understand that tithing is not a debt that you owe, it's a seed that you sow. And you don't understand the, the power of the seed and how to begin to live a seed life that the kingdom of God operates under. You can be a tither going to church, you be praying two or three hours a day and still stay broke. Because prosperity does not operate by prayer. No, I believe in prayer. But prosperity does not operate by prayer. It operates by seed. Amen. So notice even God understood this. When God wanted more children in the earth, he understood that if he wanted more children on earth, he had to put a seed in the earth. What he said in John 3, 16, for God so loved, God so loved the world that he gave a seed. <laughs> His only begotten son, that whoso would believe on him will not perish, but rest in life. Then it stood, but even though I want these children, if, if I'm not ready to put a seed of, that comes from me, my very best seed, then I can't expect the very best children to come from that seed. So even God understood that seed is how everything operates. And even when Adam and Eve sinned, God said, the way I'm going to get my, my children back is by a seed. Notice Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Genesis 3.15 says, God said, I will put an Im I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, Satan and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it, her seed, shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So he even said that even the, the, the redemption is going to come through the operation of of seed. I pray right now as I get into this lesson in the second hour that you get a revelation of seed. Holy Spirit, help us understand today how the kingdom operates through the power of seed. Give us a, the Bible said the whole kingdom operates as if a man puts seed into the ground. That's it. God says as deep as it gets. If you understand how the how seed operates. And you begin to operate on that seed. Then just as we talked about with Isaac, he put a seed into the ground. And in that same year, he got a hundredfold return. And he got richer and richer by the day because he understood the power of seed. Are you following that today? So now, so the seed is there. So God even says this in the book of Genesis chapter number 8 verse 22. It says here, he says here, while the earth remains, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease, shall not cease. So God says, as long as the earth remains, I release a covenant to the earth that just like cold and winter, just like uh, uh, summer and winter, day and night, he says, seed time and harvest will never cease. That's how I'm going to operate the kingdom. Here we saw the kingdom of God operates a man put seed in the ground. He said, everything I'm going to do is going to operate by seed. So if, he said, so therefore, if you don't get a revelation of the kingdom, how it operates, are you following me? If you don't get a revelation of that, then you're going to have you're going to be paying your tithe and not really see the supernatural. You're going to, you're going to be praying for two or three hours and not see the supernatural concerning your finances. Because everything operates by seed. Finance, fi unstoppable finances operates by seed. Mm. You can fast 40 days and 40 nights and still come out broke. If you don't understand the power of seed. You got that? So, so number two is this. You got to, therefore, when you understand that, you got to stop eating your seed. <laughs> Amen. You know, people are eating their seed. Well, I know that, you know, that God know I love him and I'm under grace right now. And uh, so, you know, I know that I should be, you know, get, you know, you know, sowing my tithe, not paying my tithe, sowing my tithe. I know I should, God put in my heart to, to give this $1,000 offering. But you know what? I can, I can buy a new suit with that. I can buy me some more shoes with that money. And see, what's happening is God's giving you money, but you're not, you're not understanding the power of seed. And you're trying to live on all you get and can all you get and then sit on the can. And then you're buying and you're wearing your seed. You're driving your seed. 
You're living in your seed, but not understand that you could be living a whole nother level if you understand the power of what? Seed. And so notice what God says in the book of 2 Corinthians for a moment. Like I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, everybody. I said that we're going to take it to a place now. It's going to take spiritual maturity to get, a, to get what I'm teaching you right now. Because you can let the critical mind get in your spirit. And Dr. Craig talking about, you know, talking about money. Or you can get a revelation. Holy Spirit giving revelation of pure heart. Of seed time. I get the purity of this. Because if I get the purity of this, I ain't got to have no more bake sales. I don't have to have no more anniversary. If you want to have an anniversary, no, fine. Let them celebrate you. I'm not putting that down. But you won't need an anniversary no more. You won't need somebody to give you a birthday gift no more. It's all to be extra. But you won't need it no more because you understand that you're going to be living off your seed and not on whether people show up or not. And that's the thing. I, man, I had to get a hold to that because I was kind of in some strife for a moment. I said certain people should have been supporting me, but they supported me. I get it all kinds of things. But you know what? I, I, it was my fault because I made them my source and not God. And I was not operating by the power of seed. Uh, my wife and I, we had been here in, in Las Vegas for four years. And, you know, but after three years, I said, God, you know, we've been in the, we, we lived in an apartment for three whole years. And, uh, and so God, I said, God, you know, we, you know, I'm not living in an apartment. When I was in Arizona, I lived in an apartment. I always had a house. And, uh, and I said, God, so, you know, what's up? <laughs> yeah, what's up? You know what I mean? I never forget, you know, as I'm praying that prayer, I was in the Holy Spirit gave me a scripture that I've been, I've been preaching it for years. Luke 6, 38. Give, that's so a seed, and it shall be given to you again. Good measure, press down. Shouldn't get a run over, shall men give it to your bosom. I've already preached that. But then God said, no, keep on reading. Keep on reading. That same scripture, he said, the scripture says, for with the same measure that you meet, with all, it, it shall be measured to you again. In other words, that he says that if you want to begin to, you know, receive more money, cause, I mean, more, because to get a house now from an apartment going to require a larger seed. Oh, yeah, yeah, larger seed. Because, you know, I was giving offerings here and offerings there. You know what I mean? I had a little extra money. Give an offering here and offering there. But God said, no. That last part of the scripture says, with the same measure that you meet. That means, if, you know, measure means, you know, uh, a teaspoon is a measure. A tablespoon is a measure. A cup is a measure. A gallon is a measure. They're, they're measured. He said, with the same measure, you give it. God said, I'm going to use that same measure to get it back to you again. He said, what you need now is thousands of dollars to come for this house. Thousands of dollars to come for this house. Okay, God. So I looked at my account. I didn't have $1,000. But then, you know, I had about nine or some dollars in this one account. And I said, and God said, no. I said, well, I said, well, God, maybe I can just, you know, send a little bit here. And I said, no, no. You want to send it in a, in, in a measure of how you want to come back. So I looked at another account and I was able to make out $1,000. And, 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 and I text uh, Apostle Ivy Hillard. I said, man, I, I need to get a seed in the ground for my house I'm leaving for. That $1,000 seed. You follow me? And I'll never forget within two weeks, you know, uh, I, I, there was something on my birthday. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what, I know what, God, was going, uh, what God was going to do. God told me to put the seat. And one of my pastors, one of my spiritual sons said, you know, God put in my heart for Dr. Craig's birthday. We supposed, we're supposed to give him at least $10,000. So, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't push that. I didn't ask for that. But, but I put that down. I was, see, God's not going to confirm that he said it's time for you to graduate from that offering to, uh, to measure how you want to come back to, you, you know, enlarge it. So then what I did, I said, okay, God, I did that. And so, and so what happened was uh, the pastors, wonderful, wonderful, I got a lot of wonderful spiritual sons and daughters. They, they got together. It was about $6,000. And one pastor said, no, God told me $10,000. He told me ten. And so... The, they actually took the rest of the money out of their own church funds. He goes, this is what God told me to do. And so, the, so then I told him later on about what God told me about two weeks before that, to put that $1,000 seed in there. And so within two weeks, $10,000 came from that $1,000 seed. And so from that point on, God then told me, now go find your house. And so we've been looking at houses, but then God's now been directed by the Spirit of God. God said, now go to this one place there. And I went to that one place, and they said, well, you know what? Praise God. Look at your credit. You know, we'll have to work on your credit a little bit, but you got a whole year to do that. So you but well, you can go and, you know, put it in for the house. And, 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 and all of a sudden, the amount of money they needed down on the house to get it going, I had the money. <laughs> I had the money. 
I you find me, I think $7,500 down. I had the money for that. And then through the process of that, that year, every time money was needed extra for the, the payments that I kept, for the down payments that I kept, the money was there. The money was there. Because I'm constantly now giving in $1,000 increments because I'm needing thousands of dollars at a time. <laughs> you follow me? And matter of fact, one of my cars I was going to sell, you know, it was already paid off. I said, you know, we, have some, we need some money for this. I'm going to put this one car. And I told my wife, I said, I'm going to Phoenix and I'm going to sell this car. I put it in the ad. I actually went to Phoenix. I didn't even know I was going to do it. Put it, went to Phoenix and, and put the ad in the paper. This one person called and said, you know what? My wife been wanting a car just like this. She has a car like this. For, but before, she wanted a car just like this. And this is just exactly what we want. And man, so within a, within a day, that car sold. Boom. Need the money. Car sold just like that. And matter of fact, we got there and I forgot that my wife's name was on the car too. And I, and I, had, to, I, I had to fly away back there to, uh, to uh, Las Vegas, bring her back. And the people, they want the car so bad, they gave me the whole check for the car without even signing for it yet. <laughs> Because everything just kept working like that the whole time, whole time, whole time. Until we move into the house, a brand new house in Las Vegas, you know what I mean, uh, w without a church, but with a seed. God kept telling me, every time you sow, you sow in $1,000 increments. See, some of you, it's time for you to move away from just sowing $25, $50. It's time for you to take another level and start sowing, you know, in, you know, uh, in a $1,000 level. Or some of you may larger than that. You, but what? Don't be manipulated into this. Listen to the voice of God, because some of you, God trying to, God is wanting to bring you into a whole nother level, but He can't get you there without a seed there. You got that? And the same thing about a car. I needed another vehicle to drive back for the Arizona. And God, you know, before I know it, God gave me wisdom on how to get a a a, 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 a Mercedes Benz uh, S six hundred that would take me back for back for Arizona. Beautiful, beautiful car. Again, uh, with my seed, with my seed. And I'm telling you that this seed works, that they don't care who you are, don't care who knows you or who don't know you. If you learn the principle of a seed and don't do it out of coercion, do it by getting a revelation I'm teaching you right now. Not information, not think you already know what I'm talking about, but ask the Holy Spirit, give me a pure heart of, of seed time. Of sowing so that I can begin to operate by my seed to the level you want to take me to in Jesus' name. So let's go, let's go here. Notice what God says here in, uh, in the book of um, uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter 9 and verse number 10. 2 Corinthians, chapter 9 and verse number 10. Notice what he says here. He says, and, uh, uh, verse 10 Now he that ministers seed to the sower. Both ministers bread for your food and multiplies your seed sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness. Notice what he says here. Number one, he will minister seed to the sower. That, that when you say, I want to go from, I mean, I've, been doing a, I've been doing a $25 uh, offering seed. I want to get to $1,000. I want to get to $1,000. A seed for $1,000. Now, okay. Uh, God says you have that thousand dollars, but now are you ready to go to that level with a thousand dollar seed? And like I said, I'm up in Las Vegas. I didn't have no church. I had no care. But God says if you want to, if you want to go there, you got to sow there. So he, I had to raise it up. You find me those there. Put some, put this together, put that together to be able to make a thousand dollar seed. And from that point on, God began to do some things in our in our lives uh, uh, based upon a revelation. God told me uh, that Luke chapter 6, verse 38, the last portion of that scripture, with the same measure that you made it out, raise your, your measure up. I'll measure back to you again. You got that? So he says this. So he said, I minister seed to the sower. He said, I'll give you, I'll give you a thousand dollar seed if you're willing to sow it. I'll, I'll show you right now, God says, that you have one thousand dollars to sow. Are you willing to sow that though? I minister seed to the sower, and then he says, then I'll multiply the seed that they sow. I'll give you the seed, then I'll multiply that seed, and you will begin to see the, 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 the manifestation of that as you begin to operate under it. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. That's what God went on with Apostle Price. You know what I mean? I, I, mean, I never, you know, I, we go to this, this conference. I never, I never in my life seen people that gave $1,000, $10,000, $40,000, $100,000 offerings until I got around him. 
But you know what? He showed us that it worked. He always started off with, a, um, he said, my wife and I, we're giving $60,000 a day. Oh my God, where's that coming from? And so being around people that, that it raised up the level of giving, that's why we had our conferences. Well, I had, God gave me the privilege of being on, on, on our thick with board, which our, which our fellowship board for six whole years. And I saw how I was operating. And but nothing for us then on our conference night to raise, uh, nothing for us to raise up a million dollars on one night. And also another million dollars for him personally as our president. Why? Because he taught us seed. He demonstrated seed. We understood that as God told Abraham that, that you'll be blessed, people will be blessing themselves by blessing you. And we understood by blessing him, we will, we will be in blessed. And so we begin to grow also from, you know, $25 offering, $50 offering, $500 offering to $1,000 to $10,000 seeds ourselves. And so what I'm saying now is that how many of you are ready? Is, are, are you ready to move into this level? Or are you going to continue to stay in your offering basis? Or are you ready to begin to multiply, let God give you $1,000 seeds to sow and be willing to sow those kind of seeds for the kingdom of God? Are you ready for that? Are you willing? Not do it by coercion, but are you willing to let God start talking to you in those areas? Because God is saying he needs someone that's ready to, to, to walk in that. I remember when I was pastoring, I remember there was a lot of members of, my, members of my church that started off giving the small offerings. But, 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 but after they kept walking in that thing and being taught that, they started giving $1,000, $5,000, $10,000 offerings. Some of us up to $25,000 offerings uh, every year. And one person was up to a $250,000 one-time offering at the beginning to operate in seed time and harvest. And I'm telling you that God is still God. Are you ready? Are you willing to be obedient to God? As I said, the second half is to, it's not for babies. This is not a baby talking to them. I'm talking about those that are ready to eat some meat, to get into the meat of revelation of the word of God that really go to all that God has for your life. You got that? So, uh, point number, point number three on this then is this, um, is stop, is to sow your way, this is my point number three, sow your way out of the natural into the supernatural plan of God. Sow your way out of the natural into the supernatural plan of God. Are you following that? So in other words, you want to move into the supernatural? You got to sow your way out of that. Because like I said, as long as you're in with the natural, you come to my anniversary, I come to yours. You celebrate my birthday, I come to yours. You know what I mean? And we go from one church to the other. Uh, you know what I mean? Nothing wrong with celebrating your past. Nothing wrong with celebrating each other. I'm putting that down. But that's all you got. If, 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 if it don't happen, you, 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 know, you, you, know, you, you don't have everything that you should have. Then the Holy Spirit is saying there's more to this. Are you following me? You got to sow your way out of the natural. Where you're depending on people. You're depending on you know, your clients. You're depending on someone showing up for you so you can show up for them. There's, there's a higher level that God has for your life, but you got to sow your way out of that natural realm into the supernatural realm. Are you ready for that? Are you really ready for that? Notice what God says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 8. It says here, he says, this is an Amplified Bible. It says this, God is able, mm, God is able to make all grace every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Are you ready to move into that? Are you ready to be that person that says, God, you're able, amen, to make all grace, favor the blessing come to me in abundance? Are you ready to move into abundance? Are you following into the abundance? Well, if you want to go there, you got to sow there. You got to begin to raise the level and the measure that you're getting out there. It's a level of faith. You know, sometimes it said, sometimes sowing, you got to, you sweat when you sow. You say, Lord God, 
Oh my God, the way you're talking to me, why are you speaking to me right now, God? Oh my God, I, you know, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm sowing it, but I'm trembling at this thing because God, I never sold at a thousand dollar, or two thousand dollar, five thousand dollar level. But God, I want to get there. <laughs> I want to get there, God. I, I, I want to go there, God. And I know right now, you know, it's it's a, it's 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 a stretch. It's, it's you know, I'm sweating and doing this, God. But but I but I, I'm, I'm gonna fight myself in the in the spirit realm. I'm gonna get there now because I don't want to be where I'm dependent upon people. And circumstances, I want to let my seed, glory to God, do the work for me in Jesus' name. Amen. Because God is able to do it. But he, if you read the, the, the preceding verses, uh, I just read verse 8. If you read verse 6, it says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Are you following me? And he says, Every man according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, but cheerfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. Then he gets into verse 8. But he's saying that because if, if you understand the power of sin, he said God is able. He'll make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Are you ready for that kind of life? You got to, you got to move out of that offerings. You know, just regular general church offerings. You got you to begin to get a relation of seed, and you got to begin to, you know, oh God, I'm sowing my first $1,000 personally. Hallelujah. Personal seeds. Amen. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was sweating for me because, you know, man, you know, on a personal level, I need that money. Are you following me? But God said, I'm teaching you because, you know, uh, like he did with Abraham, I'm taking, to, I'm taking away from everything that you know to a place I'm going to send you. But I dare I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. And God began to teach me that, and he's still teaching me that now. I'm learning it more and more all the time. But I'm pressing my way in that thing. Because God did it for me when I was in business, God did it for me as a pastor, and now God's doing it for me as an apostle, but I'm operating that principle called seed, time, and harvest. Are you ready for that today? So notice, notice this point here. There's another point. I'm, I'm going to show you this in those areas. Point number four is this. Listen, point number four. Don't let people who get upset with you offend you. Keep sowing in love. Because love never fails. Meaning that when you begin operating this, there's some folks who get jealous, gonna get envious. What you doing all that? You know, man, you're giving all your money. Man, you you, you know, you just you shouldn't be doing all that. People are gonna get like they're gonna get offended, they're gonna try to talk you out of it. Don't try to argue with them, don't try to fuss with them, don't try to get them, don't try to explain to them because Bible said that, that the carnal mind uh, you know, understand not the things of the spirit of God, but they're spiritually discerned. So just keep walking in love. Cause they'll they'll get they'll start talking about you, criticizing you. Don't what you're doing, what you're doing on your money. No, you keep on sowing. You keep on walking in love, cause love never fails. So when you step, when you start stepping outside of the norm, and you really want to tap into the supernatural, into moving out of just hundreds and thousands, but into millions, you got to begin to operate by seed. Are uh, you following this? So notice, notice what happens here. The disciples were, um, they had been, uh, you know, trying to get this demon out, cast out this boy. And, uh, and so they, you know, they were wondering because they couldn't, they, it was something that was, wasn't working for them. And they were trying to figure out, Lord, they asked, they asked Jesus, Lord, why couldn't we do this? What, what was going on? And Jesus used this, this, the, their lack of results as an opportunity to teach them that you don't need more faith. You need a seed. Are you ready for this? Notice the book of Luke chapter 17 and verse, Luke chapter 17 and verse number five. It says this. It says, and the, and the apostles said, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be planted to the sea, and it shall obey you. It shall obey you. So no, Jesus says here, he said, look, you don't need more faith. They asked the Lord to increase our faith. But Jesus taught them about a seed. They asked Lord to increase our faith. But you already got faith because the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says God has already given to every man the measure of faith. So you don't need more faith. You already got faith. But you got to put a seed you got to wrap your faith in a seed. And you got to use your faith as a seed. Because that's how the kingdom works. He said, you know, you don't need more faith. You said, Lord, increase my faith. You don't need faith. You need to wrap your faith in a seed. He said, if you wrap your faith in a seed, he says, the seed will obey you. 
the seed. You can say to the mountain, when you wrap your faith in a seed, you can say to the mountain, and it will obey you because when you wrap your because faith without a seed don't work. But a seed without faith don't work. When you can wrap your faith in a seed, he said, you, he said you can speak and it will obey you. But if you're trying to do something without a seed, that's why it's not obeying you. You say, Pastor, I've been speaking to my mountain. It ain't working. Have you put a seed in? Have you wrapped your faith into a seed? Have you, have, have you follow me? Because he said everything operates, the kingdom operates by seed, he says. So you said increase my faith. He said, no, wrap your faith in a seed. He said, then your seed then will obey you. Your seed will do the work. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's, let's get on down a little bit more here. We get into this. So, look at Jeremiah chapter number 1 and verse number 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse number 12, what it says. It says here, it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well said, for I will watch over my word, or I will hasten my word to perform it. God says, what I'm going to perform is my word. And if you look at the scriptures, the word is seed. God used the word as seed. We've been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the word of God. The word of God is seed. God's going to watch over whatever you wrap, uh, whatever word you wrap in form of a seed. He's going to watch over that seed to perform it. I'm a, because I operate, the kingdom operates by seed. So if you will, if you put a seed with your faith, I'll watch over that seed that you sow in faith to make sure it's performed, to make sure it obeys you. So it's not just dropping money anymore. It's not just receiving an offering no more. But it's, it's teaching people a revelation of seed. And when I sow my seed, and I'm wrapping that. I'm wrapping my faith with a seed. I'm not just giving an offering, but I'm wrapping that. I'm wrapping that offering with a seed, and it's a seed that God's wrapping, watching over to perform it. And so, as you're giving now, you're not giving out of compulsion. You're not giving grudgingly. You're not giving as a seed. And you're, what do I need here? I'm, I, I need a car, Lord, so I'm believing, I'm believing for a car, but i got to put a seed there now. Are you following me? And that seed, I'm naming my seed. I'm naming my seed. This seed that I'm sowing for the car, I'm, like I said, when I need the house. I wrap that seed, and, and, you know, that, that, that prayer for my house with a seed. I said, Apostle, I need you to agree with me for my house, but, uh, but I'm naming this seed. That I want God to watch over this seed that I'm sowing to perform it, my house. And the house came for it. Are you following me? And God's done it on my ministry for years. God did it for my life. But, but I, I do things in the form of seed. And God is saying, if you get this revelation, that's why I'll tell you, don't try to overthink me today. Don't try to overthink what I'm, what I'm sharing with you today. Because you may try to overthink me and think you already know this. And you may shut down what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you today. About this seed. Hmm. Hallelujah. Notice what God says in the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter number 55. And verse number 10. He says this. He says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but watereth the earth, and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, verse 11, so shall my word be, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, or my seed that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper into the place where I say. He said, when you wrap that seed in that word with seed, he said, it's gonna, I'm going to watch over it. It's going to accomplish that which you're out to do. So whatever you believe in God for, it. you want more members in your church, do it in the form of a seed. Are you, you, you You need more finances? You put a seed in that thing. You begin to do it as a seed. The kingdom of God operates as a man that puts seed into the ground. Then he sleeps and rises. He comes up. He knows not how. You begin to operate from that perspective in Jesus' name. Now, again, Psalm chapter 126. I know it's getting late for us right now. Psalms 126 makes this statement. He that goeth forth, he that goeth forth and weepeth 
bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So sometimes he says, you know, when you plant that seed, you may go forth weeping, Lord, I need this to work. <laughs> I'm putting this seed, Lord, you, you tell me to put this thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, whatever, and Lord, you, and, and Lord, I'm going forth weeping, but I'm bearing precious seed. He said, if you go forth like that and you know that it's a sacrifice you're making, he said, you shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Because now you're not doing it just out of, you're not trying to pray it through. You're sowing your way and you're putting in seed. And he said, you're going forth, it's weeping, it's tough on you, but you're bearing precious seed. He said, you shall come again rejoicing in Jesus' name. Notice the book of uh, uh, Galatians now, chapter number uh, 6 and verse number 7 of Galatians. He said, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you need to start saying as you, as you move into what you want to reap in life, the kind of harvest you want, I got to put a seed out there. Because God cannot be mocked. Are you following? Whatever man sows, God going to see to it that whatever you sow, whatever seed you sow, you're going to reap it. Can you see that together? And then in verse in, 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 in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, it says here, he, God says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season mm, you shall reap if you faint not. So sometime you start getting to the seed, it say, oh my God, don't let this going to work for me because it ain't working, Pastor. Then you keep on sowing. Don't get weary in your well-doing. You know, and, and, and you say, well, I tried it, Pastor. Then work. Let me say, no, no. Don't get where well done. You keep on sowing. You keep on sowing. You got because you got to make sowing a lifestyle. You can't just try it one day. You know, you know that you got to you, you got to get it. That's why I get a revelation of this. Because you say, well, I did it. Dr. Craig talked about that. And I just did it. No, no, no. This is what God told me. Now you're doing it and you keep on doing it because God is telling you to do this. And you're moving out hearing the voice of God. And what happens is God says, I'm not going to be mocked. When you do it based upon what I'm telling you to do, because I'm trying to raise you up into a whole other level, he said, you know, he said that I'll see too that you're going to reap everything that you sow, but don't become weary in well-doing. So my point number six in this then is this. Um, um, therefore, become a systematic sower. Become a systematic sower. That means that you don't just sow when things are looking good. You learn how to sow because God is telling you to do it. And you do it because, you know, God says, I will not be mocked. If you sow it, I'm going to make sure that you reap. I'm going to give you the harvest on it in Jesus' name. Notice what it says. Because uh, I, I got I to gotta stop. Give me five minutes. And I'm going to stop, okay? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and verse number one. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. Uh, what it says here. Uh, it says, cast thy bread upon the waters. For thou shalt find it after many days. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regard the clouds shall not remain. In other words, he said, if, you, if you're waiting on the, on the right time to do it, <laughs> you're not going to never get it done. He said, if you, look, if you look at the rain, he said, you're not going to sow. He said, if you look at the clouds, you're not going to reap because you're trying to wait to perfect conditions to do it. Are you following me? But he, but he says, he goes on down here a little bit more, and he says this. He says, uh, uh, in verse number five, he said, and, and, thou, and, and as thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who makes all. In other words, you, you can't explain how God you know, causes bones to grow inside of a woman, in a child. You follow me? He says this also in verse number six. He said, in the morning, sow your seed. And, and in the evening, withhold not your hand, for you know it's not whether shall, uh, what, which one shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they shall be both alike good. He said, you don't know when, when you're sowing. He said, if it's in the morning, sow. In the evening, sow. He said, oh, you don't know whether the morning going to bring the harvest or evening going to bring the harvest or both are going to bring the harvest. He says, you got to learn how to don't depend on the wind or the rain or the clouds. He said, you keep on sowing. Make Sowing your lifestyle, be a systematic sower in Jesus' name. And so then, uh, my point number seven, because give me five minutes, I'm, I'm going to end today on this. And point number seven is this, make God your source. Make God your source in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians 4, 15, talks about partnership on, on sowing. Now, he said, now you Philippians know 
Also, then the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Verse 16, for even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again systematic sowing. Systematic sowing. You sent once and again to my necessity, not because I desire to give, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Verse 18, but I have all, I abound, I am full, having received of Epaphroditus, the thing which was sent from you, an order of a sweet smell, the sacrifice of to God. Verse 19, but my God. Keep God as your source when you're sowing that kind of seed like that. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Meaning, I don't care what's going on in your life. When you become a systematic sower and you keep God as your source, my God shall supply your needs. Not according to this world's economy, but according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You're going to have unstoppable prosperity in your life financially in Jesus name. And then of course, uh, my point, my last point, number eight, uh, makes this statement. Point number eight is become sowing conscious, become sowing conscious all the time. And in the book of Zechariah chapter number eight and verse number 12 says this, for the seed that you sow shall be prosperous. The seed that you sow shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, and I will call the remnant of this people to possess all things. That's a promise of God. Your seed that you sow is going to be prosperous. And he said, God said, I'm going to cause you to possess all things because your seed is going to cause you to prosper. You got that? Your seed is going to cause you to prosper, and, your, and the seed is going to cause you to inherit all things. Amen. And that's what I'm saying today about being a sower in Jesus' name. God is a sower. Amen. He sowed Jesus. Praise God. Again, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 9. He said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Psalms 126, praise God, says, When the Lord turned again, uh, the captivity of Zion, we were them that dream. Then was our mouth, glory to God, filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Verse number three, the, the Lord has done great things, whereof we are glad. Turn again, our captivity, O Lord, at the streams in the south. Verse five, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And he that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him in Jesus' name. And I tell you something, that's what the Holy Ghost is saying today, is that you, it's time for the church of God to come forth rejoicing. It's time for you to begin to enjoy the pleasure and the prosperity of God that he has for your life. Amen. Where it's unstoppable that you're going to see, you're going to see increase in your life. You're going to see prosperity in your life. You're going to see pleasure in your life from evermore. But I pray today that you've not just received this as a seminar, but you pray and meditate on these scriptures I've given you tonight and allow the Holy Spirit to bring you to that next realm of living and giving Based on seed. And, and as you see this, may God's anointing be on your life. May his grace fill your life with prosperity, with health, with blessing, with unusual anointing and wisdom like you've never experienced before in your life. And now, as we stop tonight, I want to give you an opportunity, those that have been listening today, and again, uh, uh, to, to sow your seed today. And, and, and if you sow your seed, uh, number one, right there on Facebook, there's a link that you can you can click that link right there, and it'll, it'll, you can sow that seed. Also, the cash shop there at Dollar Sign Apostle I Am, also right on Facebook there, and also Zelle I Am Ministries, and also that QR code. You can just put your phone up to that QR code there, and uh, if you got a QR on your phone there, and it'll take a right to our giving area. And, and and I want you to know there that that the Lord gave me he gave me a specific word. He said. That your apostolic voice, this is what God told me, he said your apostolic voice is needed in Arizona. And so this right here really is, you know, uh, I'm in Las Vegas, but, but thank God this is going around the world. This lesson I'm teaching is going around the world. But God spoke to me specifically about Arizona. 
He said, he said your, your appetite is voice in Arizona. Now, and so I'll be spending more time in Arizona as the Spirit of God leads me because I don't know the full range of what God's telling me to do. But I do know that when I'm, when I, when I saw in Arizona, something was going on, God, and again, not putting anybody else down. God, God got great men and women of God there. But what the assignment got on my life, he said, your appetite of voice is needed in Arizona. And so um, I, I, I'm doing that now by, 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 uh, by, Video right now by Facebook, but I'll be doing it also personally and, and reaching out to certain individuals that God put me in contact with because God is wanting to raise up a whole nother level. I mean, when I was a pastor in Arizona, uh, you know, God gave me the privilege then to uh, to see him do some, some, some great things in Arizona, you know, as a pastor. But I believe that God got an assignment on me as an apostle in Arizona. And I'll be doing more and more things in Arizona because that, that, that's my assignment now. Just like God sent me back 30 years ago to Arizona to start a ministry school, which that's, I still do that right now. But God said, I'm, I need your apostolic voice in Arizona. So I'm, 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 I'm beginning to start seeing what God wanted to do because there's businesses that God going to raise up to be multi-million dollar businesses. Are you following me? There are, there are churches that God want to raise to be multi, multi-million dollar churches and, and thousand minimum plus churches. And I don't, I don't care what kind of famine that is out there. I don't care what kind of you know, uh, COVID is out there. What if, I don't care what's out there right now. God's want to do some things that are, abo- that, 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 that are above what's going on right now, especially in many of our communities. Are you following me? And, 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 and so I, I want you to, to really open your heart up. For you that, are, that, that hear the Spirit of God speaking through me as I've been talking today, uh, uh, there's other things that God will have me share, but I want you to open your heart up to what the Holy Ghost is wanting to do in those areas uh, as, as He assigns me to bring His absolute voice to Arizona. Again, not just to start a church because I've, I've passed 40 years, but apostolically, God will me to do some things in Arizona. So y'all pray that God give me more information on that because I'm, I'm doing it. On the Lord, and I, and I decree absolutely grace on each one of you today. I decree absolutely favor on you as you sow your seeds today. I, de- I decree it over your life, and I decree that you're raised up to a whole other level in your ministry and in your business in Jesus' name. So until I see you again, thank you for being here with part of, of my life today. Thank you for being a part of this seminar today. And until I see you again, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed night. Bye-bye now.